Dane's going to do the, the spotlight, and he's going to do a little demo for us. As soon as he's, as soon as he's up, um, see, I can switch over and put him a spotlight. There he is. Let's see. I'm going to put you guys in the front here. Wow, Eddie's not here. What the heck are you? So is the light intrusive for y'all to look at, or is it better without the light? Better without the light. All right. All right, so I've got one of my Coca-Cola tool handles on, or tool handle, uh, rolling pin handles, and what I'm going to do. And so it's been cut with a skew. It's smooth. It's like coming off of a plane. Um, yeah, so it's ready to be finished. And so we're just going to do a little bit of Parfix 3408. I need to put some safety devices on here. <laughs> and grab a piece of napkin, which I've already got laid out. And then we'll spin it up and we'll go from there. Okay. So I use a napkin, but I cut it in half. So I only got a half a napkin. Then I flip it. And I'll use it as such here. And we'll take the top off the bottle. That way we can get at proper uh, drippage. I'm going to run the lathe at about 130 RPMs. Eh, 160 is good. Oh, that number's so critical. Come on. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's at one sixty three now. So one sixty three. Right. All right, make it's all right. If you keep it, you know, my preference is keep it below two hundred. Um, so here we go. This is real, really sophisticated. So you take the bottle, you invert it, put your napkin at the bottom of it, and you just drizzle, and you run your napkin back and forth. Oh. Make sure you get that. Of course, it's oblong here, so you got to hold your napkin there a little bit longer. You want to get the back side. Now this is Parfix 3408. Parfix 3408. So now I'm going to, you know, so here's the front side of the napkin. Now I'm going to turn it around on the back side here. Oop. Well, I got to get the inside front here. My handle and ignore that. Now I'm just going to flip my napkin over on the back side, the opposite side. And I'm just going to run that back across. Just wipe up the excess that might be there. Uh, also known as the ridges that those other brains that you got to sand off. And so now I'm going to wipe off my nozzle so it stays nice and clean and you don't have all that gunk on there, and then you take your cap and you put it back on, and you put it back up. Now you're done. Wait, wait, wait. You're done? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. And so I'm going to take my glove off. Oh, I forgot to show Brenda. Oh, doggone it. Let's see. Let's wet finger out. No napkin. No napkin stuck. Okay, Brenda, you got that? Okay, so you could spray it with activator. And the activator for that is Parfix 1144, but I prefer to let it cure on its own. I'll let it do that here for oh, about the amount of time it takes me to take this off of my uh, chuck here. And then we'll hook up the buffing wheel. And play with it and do, do the final shine on it. Chuck out. So 
this is a collet chuck that I was holding it in. And what I'm unscrewing right now is the draw bar that you want to use on anything, any Jacobs chuck or collet chuck or anything like that to securely hold it in place. That way it doesn't go flying out. Yeah, nobody's ever done that before, right? Oh, boy, I have a hard time explaining to people what a draw bar and the beauty of it is. If it's more taper and you're putting pressure, that could come out where the draw bar has got to be there. Yep. So now I'm putting my chuck in and I'm putting in my draw bar for it. Now, I was turning it says going through the headstock and catching that uh, quarter 20 or 3 yeah. 16 hole in the back right. of it. Yes, yeah, so this is quarter 20 for the Jacobs chuck for my um, call it chuck. It's an M10 millimeters, so 10 millimeter thread. That's all it takes to put one of them in. And those draw bars change in SAE and metric. So Go to the hardware store with the chuck. Make sure you have the right thread. Absolutely. You can make anything go in one time, but <clears throat> right. might not come apart. Okay, so for my uh, buffing wheel, I always I keep everything backed up if it needs to be backed up, you know, to prevent dust from collecting. You know, we do work in a wood shop. Um, so if it needs to be backed up to prevent dust, then back it up. So I got what about a three eighths inch smooth shaft on it? I've got a half inch all thread okay. piece on here but in between my securing the buffing pad. And I've got double lock, triple lock nuts on in between two wash. Actually, it's a yeah, it's a half inch, so it's 11 sixteenths hex head, half inch threaded bolt, pinned between two washers, and then I've got uh, a double locking nuts on it to prevent it from unscrewing. All right, and here's my Bonex. I keep that in a bag as well. Then I keep the Bonex in a saltine cracker wrapper. It's, it comes in paper, but you know, obviously the paper is going to rip and tear up on you. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to spin this up. But for that, I need to go get my safety goggles. Those I keep on my binder. And I'll show you how I keep my safety goggles. Now you could use a Crown Royal bag, or you could use, you know, if your wife is in the jewelry and whatnot. So she gives me her James Avery's uh, jewelry bags. And so I use those to keep my safety goggles in. And look, they're all, look, they're all nice and clean. No crap on them. Can you pop them on your head? Not that this stuff is going to hurt or anything, but I find it aggravating when it comes off. It's me nice. So. So I'm going to spin this up about, I don't know, 2,500. I'm going to load up the wheel. Can you hear me all right? Gotcha. I'm just going to load it up. I'm going to spin it up a little bit higher. Put it at three grand. All right. Blue is nice and dry. So you see it's kind of dull, right? Yeah, actually, it does kind of look shiny. There we go. When you're buffing it, you want to keep it at about seven o'clock. Think of the clock face. Seven o'clock here, seven o'clock there, seven o'clock there. And that'll keep it from grabbing and wanting to pull you under. Okay. 
And you don't need to mash on it. You just need to run it over. And I'm not going to worry about this section because the tendon is going to go inside the uh, rolling pin, so not a big deal. Now to get the flat side. And I'll do it like this, and then I'll load the wheel up one more time. And that's all it takes. This block has been, now you can kind of see where it's skewed, but it, it started off about this tall. And so I've used maybe three sixteenths of an inch and it's two years old. Why don't you buy it? And so if there were any imperfections left from the glue, then this will take it off. Now let me wipe off the dust from my high-tech piece of equipment that I wear every day. Oh yeah, is that that's special? Yeah, yeah, you know. Here we go. I see the difference. Tip it again. Let's see the head. Let's see the head. Right there. That now comparing that to what you showed us a while ago, there is quite a difference. If you if novice turners wonder, well, does that really matter? Grooves and lines, no matter how fine, attract light and distract you from the actual beauty that of the wood. That is just smooth, so smooth. Yeah, and it's you shiny. Can, you got and you got a layer of plastic on there embedded in that wood grain that is now waterproof, fingerprint proof, um, alcohol proof. Um, yeah, it's for a rolling yeah. pin. Think about what it's going to make contact it with. Right, dough proof. So yeah, it's it's a, it's a great thing. And and oh, and by the way, you're done. Yes. And if you want to, if you got to buy a kit to get those wheels, check your local lapidary store, rock shops. And I'm not talking rock shops with the Beatles and the the, uh, the other people. This is a rock shop where you do lapidary work. They have those wheels. And the finer, finer, finer ones are good for buffing. This looks like it's a fabric wheel, not finer, but it's it's a flapper. It's not sewn all the way yeah, to the is, edge. Yeah, it's it's just a bunch of bunch of sheets of uh, this, you know, probably muslin. It's it's real real fluffy, like velvety on one side, and then it's kind of kind of rough on this side you know, on the other side, you know, but I don't know how many are in there, but there's a, there's a crap load, obviously. And, you know, like I said, and, and it's just pinched between two, two washers, you know, it's, it's got its own leather seal that it came with, but I modified it, took off the shaft that it came with because it was too short for me. And I wanted to have my hands away from the, uh, serrated uh, jaws here on your Jacob's Chuck and be able to keep the piece of, further away from it. So, you know, so I put on a, you know, a six inch bolt. Works great. Nice idea. You know, and so like nice. I said, you know, I use a saltine cracker wrapper to uh, keep the, uh, the Vonix in, you know, I'll fold it back over and I'll put it back in the Ziploc bag and I'll put this back in the, 
uh, Ziploc bag because you don't want dust or chip, wood chips accumulating on that and then scratching up your surface on the piece that you're trying to make shiny. Um, and then, yeah, you know, and then from that, you know, I put my goggles, my, my eye protection back in the little bag, pulled a line on it, and they reside over here on right in front of my grinder. There's my grinder, and they sit right there. And so, before you turn it on, put it on. Good move. How you like that uh, little moniker, Jeff? <laughs> Uh, that's a good tip on the Ziploc bags. And what's the difference between the, the uh, thin CA and the 3420 or 3480, whatever? Couldn't hear you. 3460. Do what? What's the difference between the uh, thin CA and the Parfax? Um, okay. You mean other brands? Yeah, like say uh, Starbond or whatever. So, okay. so I don't have the exact microns down or anything like that, but your typical thin CA is something like a hundred and the Parfix is 40. So it's much thinner and it, it seeps in quicker and faster. Oh, okay. So you're getting better penetration. Uh, not to mention the fact that it is a totally different formula than the regular CAs that are out there on the market, you know, because the, the regular CAs out on the market is for putting model planes together and, and stuff like that. This is medical grade CA. So it's totally different. It's not a, it's not a, um, There are two bases, it's and these not a, this is not a an totally- acetone base. So the majority of the CAs out there are an acetone base. Correct. This CA has no acetone in it. And of course, we know acetone breaks breaks down the CA, kind of defeats the purpose. Isn't it also odorless? It is also odorless. It's bloomless. You don't get the white bloom. It doesn't make the smoke. And it does not get, as you're applying it, it doesn't get hot. You know, I, yeah, I know, well, you know if you're using other CAs out there, I haven't come across one prior to Parfix that does not get hot and, and or smoke, or if you put too much on, makes that white bloom. Looks like you have more working time, longer working time with it. Yes, much absolutely. Long. Yeah, Probably yeah, 20 you, to... yeah, I was trying to demonstrate that on purpose, you know, about the working time on it. Right. Probably 20 to yeah, 30 you, times as long you could work with it. You, could, you, you would not be able to do that with tight bond or BSI or Mercury Flex or Star Bond or... Yeah, with regular, with regular CA, when I use it on pens, I can wipe down once and maybe back the second time before it's starting to grab the right. paper. Right. It's really quick. And then so for pens, there's, a different, there's an even thinner type. Um, I think it's called 30, it's, it's formula number 3460. And that's made specific. Actually, I think it's thicker. That way it doesn't glue up your, your bushings and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah. What, Dane, do you know a, a price differential between the Parfex and regular CA glues? So an eight, um, Yeah, so I know BSI for an eight ounce bottle costs at the at the woodworker's source where I get it at here in Tucson. Um, an eight ounce bottle is right around forty seven dollars, and I can get an eight ounce bottle shipped to my door far cheaper through Mark Soleil. Okay, that was a, that was a good tip about the Ziploc bags too. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, if it's if 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 it's gonna if it's gonna be dust or particle related, and you want to keep that away from it, um, I I seal everything up in in a Ziploc bag and and try to keep it keep it that way because it only takes a minute to put it in, take it out. So takes you longer to clean those safety glasses then it doesn't put them in a bag. And every time right. you rub on them, you scratch it on. Yep, absolutely. You're putting a crack on it. 
And if yep. there, you know, should there be any dust that seeps through one of them bags, what you got to do is take your air device and blow it off. You don't have to rub it off, wipe it off, clean it off. No, friction's your enemy. So thank so, you, sir. Appreciate you sharing this.